Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Titola, the Director of Clinical Affairs at Serona, and I'd like to welcome you to the Serona Media Panel, coming to you live from the 2016 Chicago Midwinter Meeting. We've got a special guest with us today, Olaf Schenk. Olaf, how Hi. are you today? Nice to meet you. You're not Excellent. only a uh, member of the press writing for the International Journal of Computerized Dentistry, but you're a dentist as well. Actually, yeah. You've been involved with this technology for a long time. Absolutely, yes. I started uh, doing CEREC in 1940. Well, no, not, not <laughs> 1940, uh, 1994, starting with CEREC 2. And ever since, uh, it just uh, never left my office any, right. any, anymore. Uh, one of the best decisions I made for uh, my a professional life, I would right. say. Well, did you have to struggle with that decision in the beginning when you, when you first got involved? Absolutely. You know, it was, when I started with, with CEREC, it was also an economic uh, decision, uh, quite an investment. But also, um, when you talk to CEREC dentists at the time, well, actually, when you talk to dentists at the time, uh, they said, what are you doing, CEREC? And they were always talking about gaps and, and, and uh, misalignment and and malocclusion and something like that, but this is all overcome. Right. Um, the technology has developed so far within the last decades that this is not a topic anymore. Right. We are now, uh, if you talk about CEREC nowadays, um, um, uh, margins or, or pre precision is not a subject any right. anymore. You have so many materials available now for, for, for the dentists. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an incredible te technology that has evolved out of the beginning of that um, simple milling machine Mr. D uh, Professor Merman invented right. in 1985. Exactly, well we asked two of the finest, you know, CEREC CAD CAM clinicians to be here today. They couldn't make it. So instead <laughs> to your left, we have Dr. Todd Ehrlich, and, uh, who I know you know, and to his left of course, yeah. Dr. Mike Scramstad. Uh, yeah. So I'd like you to ask any questions you may have about this new current material or workflow <laughs> to our esteemed panelists. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. Well, yeah. Steve, okay. yeah, it's, it's I got too far. Absolutely. We've known each other for a long time. <laughs> well, um, of course, uh, when a new technology is in introduced or a new material, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is what was wrong with the old materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, you have, if you're talking about felspatic uh, crowns or if you're mm -hmm. talking about um, Emacs, for example, uh, would you say that there is a, a major difference well, I think I think dentists always want stronger. You know, it's, you know, they, they want stronger. I mean, there was really nothing wrong with it, uh, but there's always clinical situations when you couldn't use what we have. You know, I always take second molars, for instance, when you run into minimal occlusal uh, clearance issues, uh, when you can't get the at least a millimeter to a millimeter and a half of clearance. That's a that's a job for gold or zirconia. So that yeah. solves that issue. Um, also, I think it solves the issue of, of what was wrong with before. Like you can cement uh, lithium disilicate, but most people did not. This you truly can cement. So, uh, for uh, I always joke that uh, you know the, the procedure could go perfect up until the last five minutes, and then you can screw it up. Mm -hmm. So it kind of takes that out of the equation as well, being able to cement predictably all the time. Yeah, I think what you just said, predictable, is the most important thing because uh, with all of the different options that we have with materials, and we grew up using uh, weaker ceramics, but mm. we were able to Pro do that. ProCAD, yeah, that? Well, yeah, ProCAD and, <laughs> and other Vita Mark One yeah. even. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, if you did it successfully, they were going to work out, but the key was like what Mike said, you had to do them successfully. And you know, there's too many variables when it comes to clinicians uh, clinical situations with bruxing type people or it, anything. And so isolation, isolation. You, know, you, can't, you have to be able to isolate properly and that's difficult sometimes. So what I think this really does, uh, w w it's revolutionary because now it takes something, a very predictable material and we can now do it in a way that's incredibly fast. And so it makes it more convenient for the doctor, for the patient, for the staff. And that makes it easier for us to actually deliver it Tell me we're not going to do more of these. <laughs> I mean, tell me it's not going to evolve in that just because of those things. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, if I um, think about different materials, then, as you said before, uh, it, they, they are, there is quite, quite a bunch on, on the market now. And one of the big advantages I, at least at a, as a practitioner, also found was that I could uh, adjust the materials when I used Emacs or Celtra Duo, for example. Yeah. Uh, now, how do I do, what, what can I do with adjustments with the zirconia here? Truthfully, I think you, most dentists are going to find they have much less of them to That's begin right. with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, out of maybe one out of every 30, I have to do a minor adjustment. 
I think the key with zirconia is it, if you do adjust it, you have to really, the conversation we had earlier, you have to polish it. Mm -hmm. Highly polished surface so it doesn't uh, damage the opposing dentition, but um, you, so I think you can adjust it with a diamond just as normal as long as you go back and polish it afterwards. But the fact of the matter is I think you're going to find so many fewer adjustments that it's almost a non-issue. I think, I think it has a lot to do with the dry milling process now and plus it, it's, it's milled in such a larger size. Uh -huh. So just the action of it going through the milling chamber is much more detailed. Probably the, the finest detail we've ever seen in the history of Sarah. Okay. And so a lot of those issues are now being tapered back, tapered okay. back and much easier. Now, so, uh, and, and yeah, so that's a good example. I mean, when it's about, you know, roughly milled 22% bigger uh, and then it actually shrinks that 22%, it's all based on the barcode that's on there, but it's easy for that, you know, 10 finisher burr to really get into detailed anatomy because right. it is 22% bigger than it would be with the other materials that didn't shrink. And one of the amazing things as beta testers, if you guys have consistently told me you're getting fits with this material that you haven't seen with other ones, which is surprising because it's shrinking and it seems like it wouldn't fit the as well. The way Saron has been able to calculate all this is mind blowing, but it's absolutely amazing. When you, when you take a look at some of the margins that this thing can produce, I mean, we're getting into knife edge type world and, and that's always been a big issue with the materials we were discussing before because we need shoulders or heavy chamfers. Now we're more into a margin that is more uh, accepted by general dentists across uh, the industry. Now, um, when I look at a sing single crown, I mean, this is something nice to do, um, but probably if I, if I just look at the, the existing materials and if I look at the existing um, hardware I have, uh, then I might probably will be able still to stick with the older materials, but yeah. now, what I saw is that I can also do, do bridges. This is right, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it what, is. What, what's, what's kind of the biggest span I can do with, with bridges? Well, three units, I believe, uh, is the limitation. Three just because I don't think you could fit anything more than that in the oven at once. It just the, the furnace trays Is that like enough. a 32 a millimeter or? Uh, I believe, that's a good question. I yeah, think it's I don't know 40 millimeters. Yeah, it's 40 I think I four, it's 40 I mean, millimeters. I 40 and then, yeah. then it shrinks. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah, okay. so, well, in truth, I think the final block, yeah, it's a 40 millimeter block. Okay. Yep. No, I did a three-unit bridge just uh, last week. I, I, we were talking about fit. There was no adjustment to it at all. I mean, we used 10 micron trofoil on the occlusion, and the patient wasn't even numb it anymore. And uh, she no, fits right. We didn't even touch it, not even okay. once. But there was plenty more room in the block, so mm -hmm. I bet we could have gotten two more units out of it yeah, it's, easily. And you get the connector dimensions a little bit smaller with zirconia, um, okay, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I remember six years ago when we first started working with solid zirconia, we didn't have any good burrs to adjust it. And with the zirconia optimized burrs that are now available today, um, it, it's much easier even after it's been sintered to be able to go in and make adjustments with the right burrs. If you go into just about any dental laboratory, you'll notice that they have the water on okay. while they're adjusting the zirconia because you don't want to overheat the surface. So our recommendation for dentists is use a zirconia optimized burr, which is a very fine grit diamond particle, and use very light, short, little touches on it. Because most dentists won't run the water, it's just too messy, so light, little touches. And the same burrs that uh, adjust zirconia so well do a really good job on lithium disilicate as well. And on teeth, if you have to do occlusal adjustments on teeth, mm -hmm. the diamond particles are so small that it's the easiest way to be able to polish enamel afterwards and get okay. rid of any scratches. All right. Now, if I look at this, this, this bridge, I mean, it looks just perfect to me. Um, the, the only um, reservation I would have is that it's just still, still a little opaque. Yeah. Yeah. So what well, can think, you do about this? I think that out of the whole entire process, that's probably the easiest thing to overcome. I think that's just mainly chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just obviously if you make something more translucent, you weaken it. So finding the, what the, what's the perfect megapascal to have, the, the, fi right. the balance between beauty and strength. Mm -hmm. And I think they'll, they'll switch that. I think the biggest hurdle that Serona had to overcome or was over, overcome was the furnace, uh -huh, and they've right. done that. So now it's just a matter of playing with the chemistry, doing the testing, yeah. find out what the optimal strength versus beauty. So yeah, so they are a little opaque, but uh, they still look better than metal margins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, I mean, think about how opaque a black metal margin is. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, but so. But and, that, th and this is a bridge that you couldn't do with lithium disilicate th because th the manufacturers wouldn't want you doing a posterior th bridge. Well, you could. Uh, with it. What's that? You could. You could. They it wouldn't will, recommend it, will break. it but That's you right. could. <laughs> on yeah. a, my, it sounds like Mike's done it on another one of his staff and members. <laughs> yeah. He's always experimenting on his dental assistant. No, curiously so, enough, yeah. that's the one that's worked, but all the other ones have broken. If the, if the chair side zirconia uh, you know, follows what the labs have done with it at all, it's going to uh, 
uh, start in a less aesthetic state and as time goes on get more aesthetic okay. to the point where it might be able to challenge as an anterior restoration at some point. You know the clinicians that, that publish or uh, print in your magazine, uh -huh. I mean they're they're the world's best. They're gonna take that and make it look better than we could ever do. So I, <laughs> I know uh, I know your journal will be able to publish something really nice with it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure they will. Uh, I, I would just um, when I talk to people that already um, uh, did some of the new materials, um, they also em emphasize that you can really go with like a fissure depth of just one, one millimeter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is this now due to the fact that the material is so strong, or is that because the burrs are, are so much more precise now? Or Probably the, the is strength more precise? of the material itself, the I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the strength of the material uh, is really what it does. When we were breaking bars with it six, seven years ago, you had to get down to six tenths of a millimeter. Wait, you get down to five tenths before the material really weakened. And so, yeah, it allows you to be more conservative and in areas like lower second molars where you can't reduce as much as you'd like to, uh, it's a great alternative oh. to doing a different kind of material. Well, Olaf, time flew by. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you very much. All your all input. All the Our experts. panel appreciates Thank it as well. Thank you so well. much. Esteemed. 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 Esteemed panel, yes. Esteemed and, panel. and our esteemed <laughs> European colleague. So on behalf of myself and the rest of our esteemed panel, I want to thank you for your time and your commitment to quality dentistry.